Hello everyone and welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There's a Q&A button feature located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention the college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions. There's additional hour after this, so please join us for that as well. And as always, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the site where you registered, which is strivescan.com backslash BACS. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first institution, which is Rice University. So sorry about that. I was having a little bit of issue with my screen, um, but I think I just got that sorted out. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Sneha Koherker, and I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Rice and excited um, to talk to you a little bit about um, Rice University. I'm also an alum, a proud alum of this school. So um, without further ado, I'll, I'll get started. Um, so Rice is made up of six undergraduate schools of study. We have the School of Architecture, School of Engineering, Humanities, music, natural sciences, social and social sciences. And then we also have the Graduate School of Business, which is now offering a new undergraduate business major starting this upcoming fall, which we're very excited about. Um, students, of course, can select from any of our 50 majors that we offer, um, but they also have the opportunity to really engage in interdisciplinary learning at Rice. Students can pursue multiple interests during their time, double major, take majors or minors across the different schools of study. We have flexible distribution requirements that really encourage our students uh, to pursue that kind of exploration while still allowing you to dive deeply into your major as early as your first year. Uh, we're really known for our small classes. We have an undergraduate population of about 4,000 students. Um, and so we have this focus on undergraduate teaching that really ensures that our students have access to our incredible faculty members. We have a student to faculty ratio of six to one, and these professors are world renowned researchers, highly regarded experts in their fields. And they're not just teaching you in the classroom and lecturing you, they're really gonna be there to guide you, mentor you, and be there for you throughout your rice experience and beyond. They're really encouraging and help our students really get involved in a variety of different activities. Speaking of different opportunities, we are a research-based institution. We have more than 45 research centers and institutes on our campus, and students can really get involved in that kind of hands-on learning, regardless of their area of study. Because of the extensive research opportunities we have, students can get involved as early as their first year, and about 68% of our students will do research during their time at Rice. Now we're really recognized for our student life. So I wanna mention a little bit about that. Um, and it really centers around our residential college system. This is the core of our student life experience. We have 11 residential colleges and students are randomly placed into one of them. And that serves as your home base and your home during your four years at Rice. Um, each of these residential colleges is its own diverse community. Um, it's a microcosm of rice. We've been consistently ranked um, very highly number one for lots of race and class interaction. So we're bringing students from all over the world with very different life experiences and perspectives. And in the residential colleges, you get to mingle with all of these students, learn from each other and engage with each other. The colleges are largely run by the students. They have their own budget and student government, their own cheers, special traditions, um, everything like committees and intramural sports. So this is your home base. It's gonna be where many of our students find um, their social home. Something that's really integral to the Rice experience is our culture of care. And this is really about our students looking out for each other, our faculty and our staff being there for our students as well to make sure each of them can make the most of the Rice experience. And this all together leads to Rice having this quality of life that we've been very much recognized for. Student life does expand beyond the colleges. We're home to more than 280 student clubs. Uh, we have study abroad programs in over 60 countries. And we're an NCAA Division I school. In fact, our women's soccer team um, just were announced to be conference championships for Conference USA. So we've got some great student athletes who are really a part of that Rice community as well. 
Now we can't talk about rice without talking a little bit about the city that's our home. I'm originally actually from Irvine, California, but I fell in love with Houston when I moved here um, over 10 years ago. Um, and it's incredible to get to be at Rice where you are really in an intimate and tight knit kind of oasis in the middle of the fourth largest city in the country. Um, Houston is home to the second largest theater district in the US, NASA's Johnson Space Center. And in fact, Rice's campus is across the street from the world's largest medical center. Uh, we're just a couple of miles from downtown, so our students get the benefit of, again, that tight knit community, but all of the opportunities and the exposure that you get being in a big city and all of the fun things that you get to do in a big city as well. Now, speaking a little bit about affordability, we have a commitment to making sure rice is an affordable option for every student that's admitted. So we guarantee to meet 100% um, of demonstrated need. We're need blind for domestic applicants. We also offer merit scholarships and students are automatically considered for those. Um, here you can see a little bit about our outcomes. Our students are getting an excellent preparation for their future through the academic programs, through the supportive network at Rice um, and all of the opportunities for engaging in their academic and professional paths. My favorite thing about Rice is our students. They are passionate, high achieving, and really community minded. Um, they really bring that collaborative, collaborative spirit together with all of their professional and academic goals um, and accomplish some really amazing things. So I'm happy to answer your questions about Rice um, throughout this time and even after the session via email. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rice, for that presentation. Up next, we have DePaul University. Hi, everybody. Natalie Lug here, Associate Director of Admission at DePaul University. Um, to start, we're going to look at location. Uh, DePaul University is located in the Midwest, just 45 minutes west of Indianapolis in Greencastle, Indiana. Greencastle itself is about 12,000, so a little bit more on the rural side, but you can get to any city. Um, at least Indianapolis within an hour, if not less. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of everywhere because Chicago's just three hours north. Um, we have Louisville, Nashville, just two and a half and five hours respectively away down south. Um, to the east, you have Columbus, Ohio, and to the west, St. Louis. So a lot of our paid internships, a lot of our connections with our alumni start there, but they do branch out to the west coast, down south in Texas. Uh, to the East Coast as well as across the world. So overall, as you can see, a little bit smaller institution. We are a private liberal arts school. Um, we are consisting of a college of liberal arts and a school of music, but a lot of our students do dabble in both areas. Even though we're an institution in the state of Indiana, only about 33% of our students actually come from the state of Indiana. And we do draw heavily from those other uh, cities that I mentioned earlier that are a little bit closer to us, Chicagoland being the second biggest City, St. Louis being number five, which is also where I recruit, not just from the West Coast. Um, then you also do pull heavily from say Louisville, Cincinnati, New England area is also up there, um, Detroit, Michigan, and then actually down south in Texas as well. But um, diving in deeper to the academic side of things, our students do have until um, the second semester of their sophomore year to officially declare. I would say it's very popular for our liberal arts students to at the very least have a major and a minor, if not a double major, because of the exploration that they're allowed in that first year and a half. Um, overall, about 68% of our students do um, come in undecided. I see it split 50% for the most part at the very beginning um, with our freshman classes, classes that are about 400 to 500 students. Average class size overall is 17, um, and we have an eight to one student faculty ratio in the College of Liberal Arts on the school music side. Average class size is six with a five to one student faculty ratio, but you see that yellow borderline. Um, there's actually a lot of fluidity that is going on between the two schools. We don't have quite a divider. A lot of our students will be involved in the orchestras and the vocal groups and the classes that are offered in the School of Music, um, whether they're bio majors, communication majors, economics, political science majors, and vice versa. You might have some musicians um, that are going to be in your labs working with you or discussing papers and your history classes and the likes. So a lot of different opportunities to get involved in the academic side of things. But my favorite part of campus is actually sending students off of campus. We actually require two experiential learning opportunities to be completed throughout your four years at PA. And it could be any of these bubbles. You can definitely keep them on campus if going off campus is not your cup of tea. We have a variety of paid internships across campus, research opportunities that can start the summer after your freshman year. You can apply to different research grants to get paid to do research with a cohort of students or a favorite professor that you've met. 
throughout your time here, overall about 68% of our students will physically go study abroad. Um, and then about 95% will actually go off campus in some way, shape or form. And we're unique in that we have the 4141 system, four classes in fall and spring semester where you could, could take a semester off campus. And then we also have the winter term and May term experiences where again, you could go off campus for a short period of time, whether it is for a quick paid internship, um, getting MCAT prep, LSAT prep, if you're thinking graduate school. Um, one big difference between winter term and May term is that in the month of January, we also offer classes to our students that are very outside of your major or minor for classes that you would see typically during a semester. But you're not in the classroom as much as you are in high school. So how else do you get involved? I definitely de described that the student is very extroverted. If you're introverted, you're definitely going to come in as a freshman and learn how to be extroverted. And that just goes back to all the different social skill sets as well as academic skill sets that you'll be gaining throughout your four years here that you'll utilize then um, in the career path, laying down those stepping stones to get to your end career goal. But we have activities fairs to introduce our students to all the different things that they can participate in. Um, like I said, our students are super involved. They're very much community focused and wanting to give back, not just to DePaul or Green Castle, but also to the entire community as a whole across the nation and worldwide. A lot of our alumni are tied into our different internship opportunities. Um, we are D3 athletics too, for those of you who are thinking that they wanna be involved in sports at the athletic level. So although we don't offer athletic scholarships, we do try to make up for that in our academic opportunities and scholarships that we have as well throughout not just freshman year, but sophomore, junior, senior year. Um, but a big part of you all going to college is really trying to figure out that career path. What does that mean? So for us, it's really taking what you're learning in the, in the classroom and applying that to the real world by going off campus. These are not only employer snapshots, but they're also where our students have gone and interned at during their four years at SPA. That could then lead to that entry level job. We do want to make sure that you're fully prepared, that we're providing you with different resources. Um, I do want to introduce you to a few of our most recent alumni that have gone off and taken the world by storm with all different types of ways, shapes, forms, and such. Um, so you might be able to relate to some. You also might um, be getting ideas of what else you could do, not just across campus, but also during your time at the campus uh, wearing your tiger stripes. I do wanna briefly mention, um, we are on the Common App. It is free to apply to DePaul. We do have our own DePaul University application. Both open up August 1st for those of you who are juniors. We're test optional and have been for the past four years. It does not affect your admissibility or chances of merit scholarship. This year we offered between 24,000 and 40,000 in merit scholarship alone. We do have other scholarships tied to DePaul that revolve around community service, ethics and such. And if you're thinking about being considered for financial aid, we do just ask that you submit the FAFSA as maybe a few additional tax documents. But I'll put my contact information in the chat. Feel free to ask questions and thanks so much for having me. Thank you DePaul for that presentation. Up next, we have Haverford College. Great, thank you so much. Hello everyone, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. My name is Kathleen Abels. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Haverford. Also a very proud Haverford alum. I graduated in 2009, so way back in the dark ages. Um, and because we are currently working from home, I also like to share that I have two dogs, granola and yogurt, uh, and they might at any point choose to say hello as well. This is just a quick snapshot um, of Haverford. And what I like to highlight is um, while our student body is just around 1400, we have students who are coming from all over the United States and all over the globe. Um, and they're choosing to call Haverford home because they think that this is a place where they'll be pushed and challenged to be the best version of themselves. What does that look like at Haverford? Um, our students are coming to our campus and our campus is just outside of the city of Philadelphia. Campus is just about 200 acres, a nationally recognized arboretum. One of my favorite stats from the previous slide is you'll see there's a six to one tree to student ratio. So you can pick out your uh, six trees and they're all yours. But what's also really wonderful about our campus is we're just about three miles from the Philadelphia city line. There are two different train lines on either side of campus, with about four train stops. So you're never more than a 10 or 15 minute walk to a train station and about a 15, 20 minute train ride in into the center city, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the sixth largest city in the United States, the first world heritage city in the United States. And it's really an amazing resource for our students and for our broader community. And we also think about the ways in which Haverford is a great resource for the Philadelphia region as well. 
Haverford is part of a larger consortium. We call this the Quaker Consortium, very creatively named because all four institutions were founded by Quakers. And while none of us are religious institutions, um, what this means is that we have a great relationship allowing students from all four of our colleges to take courses across um, college, regardless of what their home institution is. Over half of our students will take a class outside of Haverford each year. Um, and it's also really popular amongst the three liberal arts colleges to be involved in extracurricular and social events as well. There's free transportation between Haverford and Bryn Mawr and Haverford and Swarthmore. There's a great event on Haverford's campus. There are often students from Bryn Mawr and Swarthmore who have also gotten into that event for free. In addition, the students have opportunities to take advantage of some really wonderful dual degree programs which allow you to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts or Sciences from Haverford and in one additional year with a master's in any of these five areas. This is just scratching the surface though in terms of what our students are able to take advantage of in terms of postgraduate opportunities. I'd like to talk a little bit about the value of liberal arts, and I know this is something that um, many of the colleges represented here tonight share. At Haverford, these are the top 10 most popular majors over the last five years, and five of those 10 most popular majors are in the natural sciences. So yes, you can get a great education in the social sciences and the humanities at a liberal arts and sciences college, but you can also get a really amazing education in the natural sciences as well. About 40% of our students will choose to major in the natural sciences. One of the aspects of our experience that we like to highlight is really the value of student voice. And that comes through in many different ways. Um, one example is Haverford's senior thesis. We're one of a handful of institutions across the United States to guarantee research to each and every one of our students through this thesis experience. We think that you have something to contribute, that you're not here just to study, but actually to create knowledge um, and to be at the forefront of questions that are being asked and answered. I promise we don't just throw research on you senior year and say good luck, right? It's a part of your entire academic trajectory, which is really enhanced by our four academic centers, which are both physical spaces, but also grant making bodies for our students and faculty, and a great way to connect what you're learning in the classroom to the communities outside. Like my colleagues, um, Haverford is a really fun place to be as well. 145 clubs and organizations on campus. Our Students Council manages just about a half a million dollar budget a year for those 145 clubs and organizations. That's an entirely student managed budget. And when we think about the student experience at Haverford, one aspect that's so central is really the importance of Haverford's honor code. Honor Code is not a set of rules and regulations. Instead, it's an opportunity for our students to say, what do we value? What are we seeking to learn from one another? What are the sort of standards that we want to hold ourselves to um, and we want other people uh, to hold themselves to? It means that our campus is deeply collaborative. In four years at Haverford, I never knew one of my friend's grades. And it means that while well, yes, this is a deeply uh, academic and rigorous place, it's also a place where students are interested in lifting up and supporting one another too. I think this deeply contributes to the kind of education our students receive. Um, they think about the ways in which the decisions they make not only impact them, but the people and communities around them. And so it's no surprise that our students are really successful, um, not only in getting into some of the top graduate schools across the country, but also in terms of employee, employers really seeking them out. Our students have learned how to think critically and analyze thoroughly and communicate effectively. They've gotten a great education rooted in research, but they've also been asked to be ethical leaders and think about the ways in which their decisions make an impact on their community. I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Haverford, for that presentation. As a reminder to our attendees, if you guys do have questions for any of the colleges you are seeing today, definitely don't hesitate to put those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Hofstra University. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Christine Meyer. I am one of our assistant deans of admission at Hofstra and we, I will love to welcome you to our beautiful campus here outside of our admission center. I do work with our students primarily from Northern California as well as Pennsylvania and Western New York. So I would be your direct admission counselor. So you could feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you might have. 
So if you're not too familiar with Hofstra, we are located within New York State. More specifically, we are on Long Island. So we are within a giant suburb. Um, everything is very close to campus between beaches, parks, malls, anything is within about 10 to 15 minutes of campus. So whatever you might need is very conveniently close um, to our campus. We like to say that we are the best of both worlds at Hofstra, so we do provide that typical campus life experience um, with all of our quads and our 240 acres of campus, but we are also very close in proximity to New York City, so we are only about a 40 minute train ride away. We have a very convenient campus shuttle that will take you from campus to the train station and back so you never have to worry about driving into the city yourself. And you can always explore our internship opportunities as well as going sightseeing. Our students love to go on different food tours and go to different sporting events and things like that in the city, which is really exciting. Um, so if you want to be able to have that typical college campus experience, but also experience the great hustle and bustle of New York City, then Hofstra is definitely the place for you. So overall, our campus is considered a mid-sized school. We are about 6,120 undergraduate students. We do, of course, have additional students that are uh, graduate level, as well as medical school and law school students on our campus too. So definitely keep that in mind for any future programs that you might be interested in after you um, complete your bachelor's. But we do offer about 165 different programs that you can choose from. One of the great things at Hofstra is that once you are accepted into our school, you are accepted into all of our regular programs. So you can pick and choose and create the program that works best for you. If you want to double major or add a minor as well, there's definitely an endless amount of possibilities that our students um, like to pursue. We do have an average class size of 21 with a student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1. So a lot of personal interaction in our classroom and our professors really encourage a lot of hands-on learning and discussion-based learning as well. We do also have students represented from 48 of the US states and 78 different countries. So really cool that we have an extremely diverse population of students on our campus and everyone is all in the same boat as you coming to campus for the first time and meeting new people and um, experiencing their four years of college together. So as you can see, all of our programs listed here, some of our schools include our School of Health Professions and Human Services, our School of Engineering, our School of um, Communications, our School of Business, so there is definitely a wide variety, um, definitely communications, business, and the sciences are very popular amongst our Hofstra students. We do, of course, have dual degree options if you are interested in pursuing a bachelor's and master's combined for about five years. Definitely saves a lot of time and money Then we do have those options as well. We do have some specific direct entry um, and special admission programs like our BSMD, uh, Physician Assistant Program, our Law Accelerated Program, and our Nursing Program. So if you have any specific questions about those, um, definitely feel free to let me know as well. So internships are a big part of being a Hofstra student. We encourage any of our students within any majors to pursue an internship and get that experience in um, their field before they graduate. So you can see there are a lot of connections that we have. The list goes on and on. So our Career Center will help place you with the best internships possible in your field. And you can have, of course, one by the time that you graduate or some of our students have as many as four by the time they graduate. So whatever you are able to make work, we will help make it possible for you. And as mentioned, our Career Center, this is one of our, um, it's actually our newest building on campus. Um, so definitely if you come to visit campus, be sure to check out our Career Center. It is very brand new, updated, state of the art is beautiful, I will say. You can see about 93% of our students are employed after graduation. So that Career Center is there to help you get those opportunities. And more than half of our students are actually accepting those job offers before they graduate and even walk across the stage. So those internships are even more important than ever. So being a Hofstra student definitely involves a lot of Hofstra pride, no pun intended, we are the Hofstra pride, um, but our students do also share a lot of pride as well. So they have over 220 clubs and organizations that they can participate in. 100,000 hours um, are spent giving back to the community. So all of our student leaders involved in Greek life, acapella groups, dance groups, academic groups, you name it, are all participating in the community and giving back, which is awesome. We are a Division I school for athletics, so we have 21 NCAA Division I sports teams, and we also do guarantee four years of on-campus housing. So any potential spot you want to live in on campus, you are guaranteed your spot from year to year, whether that's in our suite style or our traditional style towers as well. 
So our application deadlines, to keep these in mind, the, uh, the deadlines will remain the same regardless of what year you are applying. So we do have early action, which is non-binding, and then we do have regular decision. So whatever deadline works best for you for your timeline, we use the Common App as well as Hofstra's own personal application. We are also a test optional school, so definitely don't hesitate. If you are unsure about submitting your test scores, you absolutely can apply test optional. If you do have scores that you wanna provide, keep in mind those ranges that you see on your screen right there. We can definitely um, help guide you in the right direction of what you should or shouldn't submit. And everyone is automatically considered for scholarships when they submit their application. And just some helpful websites to keep in mind, if you are looking to visit campus, we are open for in-person campus tours, and as well, following Hofstra U on all of our social media outlets um, is the best way to keep informed with our day-to-day -day activities on campus. And last is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Like I said, I am your direct admission counselor, and I look forward to getting to know you over this year. Thank you. Thank you, Hofstra, for that presentation. Up next, we have Pepperdine University. Thank you, Clarissa. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, but you guys never heard of that on a Zoom call before. All right. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Peter Walton. I serve as Assistant Director of Admission here at Pepperdine University. You've got a great view of our campus here on the screen. Uh, I've been at Pepperdine for about six years. I'm, a, I'm an alum as well. come from California, just like you guys. Um, and so I'm thrilled that you guys are here uh, checking out colleges. You have some great uh, options in this room. Um, so pretty excited to have you guys here. As you have questions about Pepperdine, put them in the Q&A. Um, I would love to answer them. I know you've got individual questions and uh, we can continue the conversation after via email as well. But let's jump in. First, you've got a great view of our campus. Pepperdine University is located in Malibu, California. We are just south of most of you. Um, beautiful, beautiful area. Um, 20 minutes from the city of Santa Monica with great shopping and, and, and everything that you need. About 45 minutes from downtown LA and all the things going on there. But then you've got this beautiful Pacific Coast Highway coming up to the beach where we are literally across the street from the beach. Um, plenty of celebrities walking around if you're into that sort of thing. Um, lots of things to look forward to. More important than the celebrities, more important than the fact that Zoe 101 was filmed on our campus is our mission statement. At Pepperdine, we see that we are a Christian university committed to the highest standards of, of academic excellence and Christian values and that we're a place where students are strengthened for lives of purpose, service, and leadership. And you guys, everything we're going to talk about in our five minutes together is um, relating back to this purpose, service, leadership, academic excellence, Christian values, and really being interested in investing in you as a person in our small community-driven campus to make you into the best, uh, whatever major you choose, but also the, the best version of yourself. How do we do that? Let's, let's zoom inside the classroom. At Pepperdine, we offer 44 majors and 41 different minors. Our top five most popular majors, you can see at the bottom right hand side of the screen, they include business administration. That is something Pepperdine is known for uh, within California and nationally. We also have a graduate school for business. We have our five-year MBA program, if that's of interest, I know to some of you. Um, our second most popular major is psychology. We've got biology, econ, and sports medicine are our top five most popular majors. Uh, but we are a liberal arts university. Um, in addition to whatever major you choose, and again, we've got 44 majors and 41 minors, uh, you'll be uh, taking classes, general education classes, 19 of them, in all sorts of different subjects, from uh, lab sciences to fine arts to religion to foreign language to um, non-Western history, culture, literature, humanities, giving you a broad foundation to pull from in your major and, and uh, field of study. Um, and we find that, that is a, a differentiator when looking for jobs and internships. We've got a 13 to one student faculty ratio an average class size of 19. And you can see right here, um, a, a class at Pepperdine, you can see the professor in the middle has instant access to all of our students. If you raise your hand, she not only can see your hand, but can call on you, know your face and your name and, and be a real mentor for you. I had a professor um, in my first semester of class at Pepperdine, put his cell phone number on the course syllabus and say, I've got office hours, but if you need anything, day or night, give me a call. And that was an incredible opportunity uh, to have with those professors, 35% of whom live on campus, not just for the ocean views, but for the proximity to our students. Christian values, you were thinking, what's that all about? Uh, we are a Christian university. We are associated with the Church of Christ. We're not formally or financially tied uh, to them, um, but we do um, 
want to engage students in conversations of faith. About 70% of our students come from some branch of Christianity, self-identify with that. 30% come from a different faith tradition or are atheist or agnostic. But all of our admitted students and our students on campus have in common is engage in a desire to engage in these conversations of faith. And wherever you are coming from, we want your voice at the table as we investigate these important conversations. We've got three religion courses that every student takes, as well as a convocation series, kind of like chapel. Um, students are asked to attend 14 a semester that averages once a week. You can do it however you please, um, including our surf chapel here, where you've got a professor in uh, board shorts and a hoodie um, leading a, a convocation there. Let's take a look at some other important numbers. Uh, to give you a sense for Pepperon, we've got another beautiful view of campus. We have an undergraduate population of about 3,400 students. We do have graduate students. You really don't see them on our campus. Um, we've got about half of our students coming from in-state. You guys will be in good company, but you'll also be exposed to students from nearly all 50 states, as well as 13% of our students coming internationally from a pretty wide variety of countries. You can see our um, ethnic diversity breakdown on the right-hand side as well. All of this, you guys, is super important. You may not be going out of state to come to college, but you will be exposed to an international and diverse community here in Pepperdine in order to learn each other's experiences and be able to engage in, in really important civil discourse. Um, as you can see at the bottom, lastly, 75,000 collective hours is what we spent volunteering. So many things to do on campus. You guys, almost too much to talk about. I want to see your questions in the Q&A if you've got them. We've got 18 identity-based groups, including our Black Student Association and our Latino Student Association, as well as our uh, Crossroads Club for LGBTQ and then finding students and allies. We've got ministries, Greek life, um, uh, D1 sports, club and intramural sports, all kinds of good stuff. International programs is an important thing for us to talk about for a minute. Uh, we are ranked in the top five most popular study abroad programs, you guys, because 80% of our students study abroad. Um, we have Pepperdine universities in six different cities around uh, the globe. Um, really excellent opportunity for global citizenship and such a fun opportunity. I studied abroad in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina with 50 of my Pepperdine friends. Had a really rich, immersive experience through that. A couple of uh, quick numbers before we close. Uh, we're ranked number 49 for national universities by US News. Pretty, pretty decent reputation there. 46 for best value and, uh, and, and highly ranked uh, number 50 for most innovative. Um, and a couple of uh, stats that are important to you. 94% um, of our students uh, do an internship or undergraduate research, some sort of real world experience to take into their first job interview. We have a 76% four year uh, grad rate, which is 35% higher than the national average and a really strong placement rate, 93% of our students within six months of graduation. Here are a couple of companies you've never heard of like Facebook and Disney that our students are working at. Um, and finally, um, you can see that link at the bottom. We'll put it in the chat, other ways to connect with our mission office. So thanks for having me, you guys, and go Waves. Thank you, Pepperdine, for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is Bowdoin College. Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Stegeman. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission at Bowdoin. Uh, I've been at Bowdoin for 10 years. This is my 15th year in college admissions work. Um, so I've been around a while. Um, I cover the Bay Area and I'll drop my contact information into the chat when I'm done, in case you have other questions you wanna follow up on. Bowdoin is a small liberal arts college located in Brunswick, Maine. Um, we're on about a 200 acre campus. This is our main quad that you can see. Um, and we have almost 2000 students, um, uh, all undergraduates. Uh, we are a liberal arts college. So we have um, over 40 majors, um, you know, kind of the ones that we're known for, um, uh, government and legal studies, um, economics, environmental studies. We have an Arctic studies program. Um, and um, among others um, that you would traditionally find in a liberal arts college. Um, we are moving forward on the slides. Um, we're in Maine and I, that's a really important thing um, for us to talk about um, because where we are is also who we are. Um, so you can see kind of the overlapping um, qualities that Bowdoin and Maine share. Um, Maine is an incredibly friendly place. Um, it's a very neighborly place. We are all in it together. Um, you know, and Bowdoin students are known for having these qualities. Also, it's what they bring to campus, but it's also the kind of community that they help shape once they're here. Um, and so uh, if you don't know where Maine is, it's way up here, <laughs> which might seem pretty far away from where you are. Um, but um, we are, uh, you know, in the town of Brunswick, which is about 25,000 people. 
in Cumberland County, which is about a quarter of a million people. Um, and, um, you know, everyone from, from the Bay Area always asks, well, how isolated are you really? Um, and I always joke that we don't have traffic reports. Um, you know, that sort of uh, gives you an idea that um, there are people around. You can see this is Main Street of Brunswick, um, but uh, Maine is certainly not <laughs> the most populated state in the country. Um, students like that, you know, they're, they're opting into our community um, to Brunswick again, um, because of the, the opportunities that are here, but it also gives them a chance to be a part of Footin, but also part of Brunswick. Uh, there are 60 eateries in town. Uh, there are uh, bowling alleys and, um, you know, there's a Target and a Starbucks a short drive away, so you're not going to be completely um, isolated from any fun things to do um, here in Maine. We're about 20 minutes north of Portland, um, which is uh, Maine's largest city. Um, and Portland has a jet port that flies direct to these cities. And actually, we need to update this map. Um, United added um, some more stops, um, which is great. Um, but when I fly out to the Bay Area uh, to do my recruiting, um, I fly out of the Portland jet port. It's very easy to get back and forth um, to Portland from our campus. Um, and um, that makes it easy for all of our students from all 50 states to get to campus um, and to get to campus from all over the world. Um, so 65% of our students come from outside of New England. Um, about 10% come from Maine, almost 15% are international. Um, so we really are drawing from um, close to home, but also from, from far away. Um, apart from our main campus, we have uh, two research stations off campus. This is the Schiller Coastal Study Center. Um, and um, this is a place where students engage in research, as you can see um, this class doing. Um, but it's also a place of recreation. Uh, we'll soon have um, residences out there for our um, coastal studies semester, which is an immersive um, sort of marine biology semester. Um, and then we also have a, an island in the Bay of Fundy in Canada called Kent Island Research Station, which is primarily used in the summer. Um, we have um, an average class size of about 13, um, where you know students really get to know each other. They get to know their faculty. Uh, faculty are at Bowdoin because they want to teach. Um, and faculty only teach two courses a semester. So they're teaching loads a little bit lighter um, than maybe some other institutions. And that really allows them to get to know their students. I just got like kind of kicked out um, <laughs> from um, there. But um, anyway, my name is Katherine Stegman and I'm happy to have any other questions, uh, answer any other questions um, in the Q&A. And again, I'll put my, um, put my name in the chat. Thank you. Thank you to all of our institutions who have presented this evening. I'm gonna invite them all to come back to answer a question for you guys in a round robin session. And that will be, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we will start with Rice University. Hi everyone again. Um, my favorite tradition um, at Rice is our O week, which is our orientation week. Um, our upperclassmen students spend a lot of time planning this to welcome in our new students. And the first part of O week is move in day where new students are driving to campus. You know, they show up at the residential college with their family, with all of their stuff. And they are greeted by a bunch of screaming, cheering upperclassmen students who have um, are just so excited to bring you. They will move all of your stuff into your room for you. And in fact, before you've even stepped out of the car, they are yelling your name without you even introducing yourself because they have memorized everything about you. Um, and I know at first that felt a little scary to me because I was like, I don't know who you are. Why do you know who I am? Um, but it was so exciting and, and really, really a wonderful feeling as an out of state student to feel like this is my home. People care so much to make me feel welcome. And I think it really sets the tone of what that collaborative tight knit community at Rice is all about. Paul University. 
I think one of our biggest traditions definitely speaks to our alumni network and that eight to 10,000 alumni come back for one weekend in the month of November. It's actually our last football game. Um, it's called the Monon Bell game where we fight literally for this old 300 pound railroad bell against Wabash College, it's all male school just north of us. Um, and it is the only division three. Haverford College. Great, uh, thanks for this question. I also love because I have a Zoom background uh, that sort of articulates this tradition. So um, at Haverford, I mentioned every student has a senior thesis. Once you've submitted your senior thesis as a class, you'll gather on Founders Green, you'll head up into the bell tower on top of Founders, and then every student will have the opportunity to write their name on the bell or the walls surrounding the bell. And they'll also ring the bell. And this speaks to both the deeply individual uh, sort of aspect of this experience. You have changed as a person, you have made an impact on this community, but there's also a lasting sound from every person in your class um, striking the bell, the ways in which you've changed and shaped and challenged this place. Thanks. Hofstra University. So one of my favorite traditions on campus is fall festival um, and I was lucky enough to partake in this when I was a graduate student at Hofstra so it is one of our largest events um, usually about a month after you've moved back onto um, campus for the first time so it's the first time that your family and your siblings and everyone can come back and see you we have a giant carnival on our campus and our student organizations will have programs and different events that will usually raise money for their philanthropies and then we do also have an entertainer come to campus um, so we've had a lot of performers come um, like flowrider we've had kesha um, i always like to mention we've had tlc but that does feel like it dates myself um, as a 90s kid but definitely um, a really fun time for all of our students to um, take part in pepperdine university Gathering that we need more bell events at Pepperdine. I don't know what's wrong with us. Uh, my favorite event is our Step Forward Day um, in fall. It's in the first week of school where all of our students, our entire student body, as well as faculty and staff, go into various parts of LA and serve, whether that's in under-resourced schools or beach cleanups or, or, or beautifying um, other parts of the city that we love. And then we come back to campus, enjoy our, our beautiful green lawn overlooking the ocean and have a couple in and out burgers. Um, you guys know in and out um, so great ways to enjoy being in California. And Bowdoin College. Uh, so food is a really important part of the Bowdoin culture um, and um, we start and end the year with a big community meal um, where students, faculty, and staff all gather um, to eat together um, and uh, we always start the year with a lobster bake, um, supporting our lobster fishermen um, in the area, uh, but it's just a really great way for everyone to see each other when they come back um, and for everybody to uh, make those connections and uh, share a meal together. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions. There's additional hour up next for the college fair. So definitely join us for that. And in about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as any other sessions at strivescan.com backslash BACS. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.